Now our discussion on rising inflation continues where we left off with Nigerian households and how they can manage increasing price pressures. Here is Ola Dideli yesterday on the pressure faced by households. Let's take a look. A lot of people are making very serious decisions um, considering should we go out to eat or should we stay at home? There's food at home. Um, should we switch off the AC to conserve power? Um, People are making adjustments. People are now going to the market to shop as against going to, uh, shopping in the supermarket. Why? Because it is biting on everyone. The price pressure is a lot. Um, of course, we are hoping that things will get better, but for now, it's, it's quite intense. We now turn to the investor side of the inflation discussion. How can investors create a sustainable portfolio to hedge against rising inflation? Our guest, Victoria Njimanze, is a senior fund analyst, Afri Invest Asset Management, and joins me to discuss this further. Victoria, good morning. It's great to have you on the show. Good morning to you. Thank you for having me. You're most welcome. Now, from the perspective of investors, as inflation rises, of course, what would you say the demands are um, in terms of returns on investment securities? Okay, so typically when inflation rates are high, you see investors demanding higher returns for their money. And that is majorly because... Um, they're trying to take care of the diminishing purchasing power of money. So that basically means that what a certain amount of money could buy for you before now is not the same. So put in perspective, say you had one million naira last year. What one million naira could buy for you last year, this time last year, is not the same thing as what it can buy for you now. So to just compensate for that, you see investors typically seeking higher yields for their investments. Yeah, that's a very interesting perspective. It, it just puts, uh, makes everything in art. But let's look at the stock market. If we look at the NGX, which is up 33.61 as at close of trading, if I'm not incorrect on this yesterday. Headline inflation in March, 33.2%. Is the NGX alone enough to comp compensate investors for inflation, rise in inflation to be more specific? <laughs> okay, like you, like you rightly said, um, NGX closed at 3.6%, inflation is at 3.2%. So effectively, there's um, real returns there. So real return basically just means return adjusted for inflation. So if you look at it that way, there is a little bit of real return, but it is prudent for investors to always um, have a diversified approach to investing. So the, the goal here or the aim is not about beating inflation is making sure that you are invested to reduce the impact of inflation, even if the potential return would not compensate you fully for um, the rise in inflation. That's very creative. Uh, I like how that's put together. But then how does one go about putting together a, a stock market portfolio that combines both dividend yield and um, capital appreciation? Okay, so when you're looking at dividend yield and capital appreciation, first off, the investor wants to understand the objective, um, what's the time frame, like time horizon. Um, when you look at all of this, now looking at dividend yield more specifically, you want to look for companies that have consistently paid dividends, right? Um, when you are picking up those companies, you, you also want to make sure that you're comparing them with their peers to make sure that they have more attractive dividend yield. And to calculate dividend yield is quite easy. You just need two things. You need the um, stock price, and then you also need the, um, the annual dividend that was paid per share. So when you do the annual divided by the stock price, you'll be able to get your dividend yield. Now, that is on one side. You're also trying to look for companies that have potential for growth, right? That's for the part of the capital appreciation. So you're looking at companies that have um, earnings potential, um, you're looking at companies that have revenue potentials, expansion opportunities, right? You're trying to put all of this together to be able to come up with the kind of portfolio that you need. Don't forget, you're also trying to diversify. Even though you are still trying to invest in the stock market, you're trying to make sure you're doing it in different sectors or different industries. And that is majorly because you are trying to reduce the risk of, you know, a single sector or a specific company risk, right? So you're just trying to make sure that you have your eggs, right, in different baskets. So diversification is pretty much your safety net. Exactly. And I like that you're talking about this because, you know, for neophytes or fledgling investors who are trying to get into the investing space, risk is a major deterrent, they just say. Oh, yeah. let, let's add some more color to what this risks are. Should I be investing in just one? What risks am I facing? Okay, so when, you, when you're trying to invest in the stock market, right, there are a lot of risks, but the primary one would be the market risk. So um, macroeconomic events, 
and um, happenings would also affect how market behavior will play out and in one way also influence how um, the performance of the stock will play. So you want to be um, up to speed, up to date with what is happening, um, talking about the macroeconomic condition of the country. You're also looking at company-specific risks, industry-specific risks. So when you're looking at company-specific risks, you're looking at cases, case in point would be um, you have um, change in maybe the management or maybe a product failure or, you know, there are different things that could that could happen, maybe legal issues, right? And all of this could also affect how the share price would perform. So you're trying to look at all of these risks together to be able to have um, a, a way of putting together your investment decisions and making the right decisions. Right, so it's a collective overview of, of potential exactly. risks and you're pretty much indemnifying yourself against them collectively. Exactly. Well, let's move on to uh, treasury bills now. Uh, some people are very excited about this part. The last auction had stop rates ranging from, I don't want to uh, give you the wrong figures, so about 16.24 to about 20.7 percent um, from the last check. Can you define the true yield for our viewers and is that enough to protect against inflation? Okay, so the yield that you see is the return that that investor is getting based on the purchase price and the face value. So treasury bills are usually um, sold at a discount to their face value, right? So what you're seeing as the yield is what you are getting effectively as the investor. And like you mentioned, inflation is at 3.2%. The current yield is around um, 26%, 26%, percent right? So it does not 100% cover for inflation. But like we have also pointed out before, the aim here is not to beat inflation. You're just trying to reduce the impact of inflation on your portfolio so that overall, you know, you are better off. All right, so what about U.S. dollar cash and uh, U.S. dollar securities? I know we're not trying to beat it, but in what ways could this even give us some sort of buoyancy against it? Okay, so um, investing in U.S. security is also a very good um, way to navigate through your investment, right? But once you're able to build a diversified portfolio, I think you can pretty much say you're covered, right? So you're not just investing in the U.S. markets. So you're in Nigeria, right? You also have um, inflation rates here, which is completely different from what is happening in the U.S. So you want to take all of that um, into um, the books when you're trying to, you know, build your portfolio and you're diversifying across different markets, across different sectors also. All right, Victoria, I'm going to ask you to spoon feed us a little bit. What, <laughs> could you give us a, a clear example of what an appropriate portfolio would, should look like? Just an example. Okay, so I know today a lot of people have heard diversification, diversification, and maybe some people are already tired of hearing about diversification, but it is quite important that people understand that they have to allocate, there's asset allocation, you have to diversify your portfolio. It is important. So um, you, are, you are going to have some sitting in fixed income market, you mentioned treasury bills. We are seeing yields at levels that we have not seen in a long time. I remember January this year, the, the yield on one year note was around 9 to 13%. And now, uh, this is just um, April, we are seeing it at around 26%. So that's quite um, impressive. And that's why we're always saying people should take advantage of what is currently happening in the fixed income market, right? You're having some of fixed income, you're having some in, um, in stock markets in different sectors. So you're trying to make sure that you have investment allocated across different asset classes. So you're having a mix of assets. But you know, even if you cannot do this by yourself, we always have your financial advisor to help you um, hold your hands through the entire process. Yeah, that's always refreshing to know because yeah, yeah many times <laughs> that's, that's the best way out, isn't it? Yeah, until one can do it themselves. But now with inflation still climbing, I'm gonna ask you to look into uh, your crystal ball here. Do you still see the embassy still raising rates um, at the next meeting in May? And what would this mean for the money market and uh, fixed income securities? Okay, so, so far this year we've seen two meetings. Um, at the first meeting, MPC raised rate by 400 and the next one they raised by 200 bips. And so far we have seen 600 bips. Um, so for me, I believe the MPC want to, they want to do a wait and see approach. So you've done all of this, you want to see how it permeates into the system. Let's see what the system is doing. We still have four more meetings, right? So for this particular meeting that's happening uh, May, I don't think they would be raising, um, they'll be raising rates, right? But for money markets, instruments and fixed income, we've said that 
the yields currently are quite attractive and that investors should actually start taking a look at it, right, to invest in it because these higher yields are not going to stay high forever, right? So you want to make sure that you are invested, you want to take advantage of it. Of course, speaking to your financial advisor to know where best to position yourself, but we see the yields trending downwards over time. So it's a good opportunity so, so for people to- So you don't see the rates rising? No, no. For, for the reasons that you've highlighted? If at all, um, rates will be going up for the year, I'm not seeing anything um, higher than 100 bips for to close out the year. But for the next meeting, I think it will just be a wait and see approach. Let's see how all of what they've done so far um, is reflected. What, what would you say, your, your, would you like to comment on what past meetings have been like in terms of uh, what the decisions from those most recent ones are um, in relation okay. to... So, so before now, we've always um, heard of cases where people say that transmission mechanism not really had a smooth transmission mechanism, mm -hmm. right? So you see rates going up um, at the NPR and you're not seeing it translate into the market. There's something um, that, that we always say that fundamentals will always win, right? Because it reflects market reality. Now we are seeing NPR rates going up. We are seeing it translating almost, we are also seeing it translating treasury bills, right? And um, other instruments in fixed income markets, bonds, even savings bonds. The last the savings bond for this year, the two and three year, we saw it 16 and 17 percent, which is quite high compared to where we used to see it before. So now we are seeing a more smooth transmission in terms of how all of the policies um, they are playing, how the system is going to pick it. So that's why we're saying for now, we just, we just expect them to, you know, just let them even see how all of all of it is playing in the market. All right, cautious, uh, cautious optimism there. Victoria, I want to thank you so much for coming on the show today. And um, I will be giving you a call when I'm ready to take that plunge.